Guest hosts for you this uh, hour, Steen Jakobsen, he is Group CIO and Managing Director for Asset Management at Lemus Capital Partners. Steen, good to see you. Welcome. Good and Mark Farber is in the chair on my other side, editor and publisher of the Gloom, Boom and Doom Report. Mark, a pleasure yes, as always. Is. Okay, let's Same get here. straight in. Ding, ding, round one. Is this summer rally going to last? Steve, we'll start with you. No, it's very clear the evidence in the last couple of weeks has been that the weekly leading indicator is coming off. Consumers in the U.S. is starving again. And, and I think we are looking at a massive slowdown in growth in the second half of this year, especially in the U.S. Um, but it's going to start now? This, it's already what started. What we've got is a head fake, is it, over the last week or two? I think it is. I think U.S. It is. recovery? I think people are over-focused on 200-day moving averages and technical factors. The fact that the matter is, for most of uh, the last four to six months, we've been in a big range. I think the risk is to the downside. We, uh, we got drunk on stimulus, and now we need to sobering up. <laughs> drunk on stimulus? I'm always drunk, so okay. <laughs> that's new. No recovery. <laughs> No, I think I was recently at a gathering, and this is a well-to-do American family. They live in New Hampshire, I mean, really unusual lifestyle. And they had Nouriel Rubini, David Rosenberg, Gary Schilling, and myself. And this was really the meeting of the bears, the super bears. And they all see a slowdown in the second half as the stimulus wears off. And as Steve said, there is this sobering phase. Yep. But in my opinion, it doesn't mean that markets will go down and break the March 2009 lows. I think we are in a correction phase. We got very oversold as of two weeks ago, 10 yep. days ago. We're rebounding. I think we can go maybe on the S&P to around this resistance level, 1,170. And then we'll probably have a bad September, October. Okay, but we get a summer rally that we can trade. Well, I mean, Europe at CNBC.com. That's the opposing view. <laughs> Let us know what you think. Uh, Mark, what do you what do you make of the attempts by European governments to raise, um, what well, to issue debt at this time? We don't think there'll be a problem, but we can't really work out how much the ECB is but, buying. But I wonder who among this table would now buy a Spanish bond for 10 years at 4.91%. Would you? I mean, if you couldn't sell it as a trade, I can understand someone who buys it or sells it. But if someone came to me and said, lend money to Spain for 10 years at 4.91%, I'd say, you know, go to Jeff. Maybe he will give you the money, but, or CNBC, but not Mark Faber. Because I think that no matter what equity markets will do, and I, to some extent I agree with Steve that the economy will slow down once again, they're going to print money and the interest rates are at zero. And in Asia, I can assemble a stock portfolio even today, even after the strong rally we had in 2009 until, say, March of this year, where the yield, the dividend yield would be, say, 4 or 5%. I'd rather be in equities than in Spanish bonds. Sorry. To but Steve, you'd rather be in bonds than equity at this point. Yeah, so but, would but you be the buyer of his <laughs> Spanish tenure? Absolutely not. I'll be in, in, in this stronger northern region, I in particularly in U.S. bonds. But I, I think eventually we all have to get out of fixed income. But I think fixed income have been underlaughed for a long time because clearly we were in a stimulus phase and people were looking. Uh, and you can certainly see in the hedge fund uh, results for last month that they were extremely short in the fixed income side. I just think that we in a, normally during the summer we have a rally. We will certainly see that Spain will and everybody else will have difficulties to keep raising capital. But you see about bonds, I mean David Rosenberg and Gary Schilling, they're very bullish about US government bonds and they think that yields will actually, I made a bet with David Rosenberg, he said that uh, 10 years yield on the US Treasury note would go below the low on December 18th, 2008, which was 2.08%. In other words, we fall below 2%. I bet it won't happen. I think that from here onwards, yields will have a rising tendency. Doesn't mean that for the next three months, bonds can't rally a little bit. But their argument is bonds have so much outperformed equities. But my argument is precisely because of that, I wouldn't be in bonds. And number two, if I'm as negative as they are, 
about the global economic outlook, then I think I'd rather be in gold and gold shares. Sylvia, let's, let's bring you in because, as we know, the bond trade really has been dominated by the involvement of central bank activity, and namely QE. Now, the ECB has engaged in a bond purchase program, um, but at this stage we're not clear whether they are going to go down the unsterilized route here, which would of course have a, an, a, another impact on the yields that the market could expect. What, what do you glean from the ECB these days on that? And also it would, of course, have an impact on some kind of inflation outlook somewhere down the road at the moment. I know we're all more worried by deflation than by inflation, but we're, of course, filling the pipeline with uh, inflationary uh, possibilities. Uh, well, this sterilization, in all honesty, is more like a smokescreen than anything else. The, the ECB, in an almost desperate attempt, is publishing every, every week, every month, how they um, point to point sterilize everything they purchase. Uh, it, at this stage, it's probably not that important except for ECB, perceived ECB credibility. Uh, what's interesting is maybe if you look at the development of the bond purchase program over the weeks, because the, the total amount, uh, at least what we can glean from it, has go, uh, gone down from week to week. It remains to be seen that if the situation in Spain is heating up on the speculative front, the ECB might have to step up its purchases. They also, of course, do not tell us ostensibly their overall purchases um, for the Eurozone because they say it gives them more flexibility. They are probably right in that. But maybe my question to, uh, to Mark and Steen is, to what an extent do you think this ECB blitzing their way through the bond market is going to really throw the euro bond market off kilter in terms of yields for the time being and maybe for the foreseeable future? Because all we had in terms of getting the market uh, at finally assessing that a German bond is, has a different value than an Italian bond, this all seems to be blown out of the window. Mark? Well, I think any government intervention has unintended consequences and is negative because the market basically, if you look at it, in a perfect market, the market gives you signals. In other words, when it goes up, there are more buyers than sellers, which is natural, and when it goes down, selling overhelms buying and there are more people that want to get out. But when the government intervenes, whether it's through price support of a cartel or through price controls when there are inflationary pressures, eventually the market will break the intervention and then things blow out. No, cl clearly we can see it in the way they operate because like they were, they're in the Portuguese bond market buying and it's still blowing out in terms of the spread. They're, the Spanish spreads are blowing out. So effectively, they're, they're, just, they're doing like they do with foreign exchange intervention. They're trying to come into the market and trying to scare the market off. But the, you know, the market doesn't care. As Mark says, ultimately the market will go where the market needs to go because there, there's too much financing going on and they need to refinance. Yes, and I may add one Very point. Quickly. Basically, the ECB didn't bail out Greece. It bailed out itself.